So welcome back, everyone. Today we have a very exciting groundskeeper chat with Madison Manos. I'm hoping I said that correct. Yeah. <laughs> She is a head groundskeeper out of Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and today we're going to be talking about prepping for spring sports. Um, so not only, you know, getting everything ramped up uh, equipment wise, making sure everything's safe and playable, but also battling the weather here in this region of the United States um, is definitely a factor. It's something that you may want to get started, but the weather's just not going to allow it. So we have lots of fun things to talk about today, so we'll get started right away. Madison, take it away. Introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about your field and facility. Hi, yes, my name is Madison. I am the head groundskeeper for Hempfield School District in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Um, I am the only full-time grounds dedicated person for our district, and we are a K through 12 school. We have 11 schools and three additional buildings that we take care of um, with over 200 acres of turf and 20 acres are natural grass athletic fields. And then we also have three artificial turf fields. So we don't do all of the maintenance to all 200 acres. We contract out mowing and uh, snow removal for the other schools that aren't on this campus, which helps out a ton. Um, but we do everything more than 85 acres here. We do take care of everything for the mowing and snow removal and everything. So it's a lot. I do have one person that helps out from April to November and he does like a lot of mowing and weed whacking and different things like that. And then I do have we have a whole crew of guys here that'll help when I need help moving goals and mowing and that sort of sort of thing. Um, so yeah, there's there's a lot of space to take care of here, and especially for spring sports um, where we play varsity and JV baseball and softball, track and field, um, varsity and junior high uh, on, on this campus here. Uh, lacrosse and club soccer and boys and girls tennis so it's hard to you know it's the shortest season to prepare for because like you mentioned earlier last week even we had snow covering a lot of the area that we had to prepare so it's a lot to get ready in a short amount of time definitely and and i didn't even realize that you were operating as a one-man band some of the uh some of the time so that's even yeah. ups the stakes even more for sure oh yeah absolutely so you kind of covered you know what sports are played um in the user groups or anywhere from you know k through 12. on this campus it's mostly um middle and high school but we do have some club sports that'll come and play here and like on our our artificial turf fields. We do have some, um, I wanna say like HYA groups that'll come in and different youth associated groups at different times. Um, but yeah, we have, I mean, recently because of COVID, we've had to have some of our fields used as mask break areas. And that was just crazy this past fall seeing we had one soccer field that wasn't being used at all for anything. And we had one field that the kids were taking their mask breaks on. And it was just amazing to see the difference between the two fields. And um, so I'll be doing some rehab on that field this spring and summer for sure. Definitely. And that is just so interesting, the, the unasked for perspective, of course, but something that, you know, I'm sure will um, give you insight to, to maybe change things around or whatever that may be in the future. Yeah, absolutely. So with COVID, um, are, were you guys able to play any of your fall sports in the fall or any of those being played this spring as well? We actually got most of our fall season in, which was great. We started a little bit later for all the sports. I think everything got pushed back two or three weeks. Um, and then we did have to shorten the season just a little bit, um, like the playoffs, especially for football. I think that they took half the teams that they usually do into the playoffs. Um, so that was a big change. And, you know, the athletes obviously weren't happy about that, but I think they were just excited to play at that point. So we were lucky that everything we got to fit in. 
Of course. Yeah. That's, I feel like in our region, especially we um, we're blessed to be able to, you know, kind of give some normal normalcy to the students, but I know in other parts of um, the world, we've heard from our customers, like so much was still just uh, in limbo in the fall and they're going to try and make everything happen in the spring. So that will be oh very gosh. interesting for those folks. Oh, I can't imagine being one of those groundskeepers that has to prep everything. Yeah, our thoughts are definitely with that. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, one challenge that you guys face as we've touched on a little bit is just that that short time frame. And, you know, once snow removal does happen and you guys feel like you're in the clear, you know, what are some ways that you're kind of waking your fields up to be prepped for the spring season? So, Honestly, my biggest tip for waking up the fields is just do as much as you can in the fall and winter. And that's kind of been, I've been here for a few years now, and that's just been my um, biggest takeaway. The first year that I was here, I was not prepared for spring sports at all. I was really scrambling to get things done before practice and before the first scrimmage. So I learned from that, you know, kind of being thrown into the fire that you need to have your ducks in a row. <laughs> so in the fall and early winter, I'll apply a slow re release uh, nitrogen fertilizer. And that usually just helps with spring green up and, you know, getting these fields ready. And then I don't have to worry about that application in the spring. And also I'll do, um, you know, we put mound and plate tarps on, so that usually helps to protect those surfaces for baseball and softball. Um, and the other thing is just, you know, trying to get a good drag on your fields as soon as possible, even if you're doing it when it's frozen on the infield surface, just trying to make sure that everything's level and uh, safe to play on. But yeah, like in back in, I think December, I painted all my foul lines and all the lines that I need for track and everything. Um, and that way, when we got down to it, I knew that if we had snow down on the ground in March, that at least I had lines painted that they could use. And it didn't matter if the ground was too soft because they were already there. So that was probably one of the biggest things that's helped me the past couple years is just being as ready as possible. Yeah, that's another level of preparedness that is definitely going to, you know, come into play if if it is snow. I I never thought of that. That's a great um idea just to make sure there's something down for yeah. sure. Yeah. Thank you. And we talked a little bit about safety, but what are, you know, once those fields are, you know, up and ready, they're they've been woken up per se, what are the main like safety concerns that you have or things that you check for to make sure that they're going to be safe and playable for the athletes? Well, the number one thing is having a um, fair and firm playing surface that's level and you don't have any dips in the infield skin or in the field, you want to have everything all level and, you know, you don't want them tripping in a in a dirt pocket or anything so again that goes back to the fall you know i level everything out before we put the field to bed um, for all of our baseball and softball fields and usually there's not a ton of work then with leveling that needs to be done moving forward and in the um, for the turf fields just adding more crumb rubber wherever you have to for the artificial turf and getting that down and grooming it so that everything's level and is safe to play on, especially in the high wear areas like lacrosse right around the goal, just making sure that you have enough there um, because that's a, a high wear area. Um, and then the other big thing is just communication, especially with the athletic director and coaches and that they're not playing on a wet field because then that kind of ruins all your hard work that you've put in leveling it and you don't want them running around in mud. So, you know, and the grass is slippery and everything. So, um, and then the detail work, making sure that the batting cages are safe and the nets don't have any holes in them. They come all the way to the ground, uh, making sure that the backstop netting is safe so that when we can have fans that are watching the games that there's nothing flying through there that's gonna 
uh, be a hazard. So there's uh, some little things, but mostly just making sure that the that the field is safe and there's a level playing surface and uh, no lips or anything. So. Of course, and you, yeah, that's a, that was a ton of um, questions you just covered in one answer. So I love <laughs> that, make my job easier. But one thing I wanna ask more about is, you know, wet conditions, especially going into this year, we're going to really want to give these kids a season if it's possible. So what are some of the things, you know, if it's super wet or waterlogged that you're going to try and do to make sure that a game doesn't get canceled or, you know, inevitably doesn't happen? The first thing I'll do, I'll go out early morning and just kind of assess the field and that'll tell me what direction um, usually if there's standing water on the field, they have these pads that you can put over the puddle and it's like a sponge that'll soak up as much water as it can. So I'll hit the big puddle areas with those. And then I'll usually throw some calcined clay over top of those really wet areas and let that sit for a little bit and do its job. And that'll at least help soak up a little bit of the surface moisture. Um, and then after that, I try and nail drag it. And that just kind of gets everything mixed up and you can get it to dry out a little bit from when there's some loose on top. Um, so I'll do that and I'll let that sit for as long as possible. And then I usually have two games to prepare for when we have baseball or softball. So I have to get the JV and the varsity fields ready. So I'm going to be cutting it close to whenever they want to get on the field at 3.30. So I just wait as long as I can, and I know how long it takes me to get the field ready after that. And I'll do a smooth drag once it's dried out enough and um, put the lines on, and then it's ready to go. But some, you know, the AD can, can get a, a little... Uh, persnickety, I guess, about, you know, they want to get their games in and I don't blame them. They don't want to mess up the schedule or have to reschedule. So just working with the AD and coaches and if it's not safe to play on, it's not safe to play on, but we're, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that it's ready for them. So. So it what is a typical, I know every day is different, especially when you're operating you know, alone sometimes, but what does a typical day look like prepping for the spring season? So the spring season, if it's a game day, I'll go out in the morning and check out the fields and see, you know, is there a hole at home base? And is there, you know, some areas in the pitching rubber that I need to, to fix or the mound or whatever it is? And usually I'll do that clay or uh, infield mix work first and let that sit. And if it's dry enough, then I'll do a smooth drag over top or a nail drag, depending kind of what the conditions are and just make sure that that surface is ready. And then I'll go and mow. Usually I mow the fields in the morning and get those done with, and I'll mow whatever else I have time to, because we do have you know, over 85 acres that we have to take care of. So there's other mowing that needs to be done. Um, and then I'll come back and put the lines down and make sure everything's ready to go, that the dugouts are clean and the trash has been emptied in the dugouts and clean off the home plate and pitching rubber. And for our other sports like track, I still have to paint those lines. So if it's a track day, I'll paint the lines, mow the inside the stadium area. Um, and for lacrosse, just make sure that the nets are properly tied on. If I have to add, you know, some more string to tie that on, then I'll do that. Um, but yeah, just making sure that everything's all good to go. And then I just try and fit in whatever else I can besides getting the the field ready for whatever sport it is. So, you know, spraying weeds, pruning trees, checking out the rest of the district and making sure that everything looks good and addressing any problems that come up. Um, and especially with COVID, we've kind of been pitching in in different areas where, especially over the winter, I was delivering cleaning products to some of the schools whenever, you know, they needed them. So 
it's it's been you know a bit of a crazy time so we'll see how that fits into spring sports but yeah just trying to fit in whatever i can during the day